there are a couple of news clips that I'd like you to listen to. We've been talking, it's been a little while now since we have um, talked about this, but we have talked about the attack that happened on October 7th and why that attack happened, not justifying the attack, but also looking at the context of what Israel has been doing to the Palestinians for 75 plus years. We've taken a look at the historical ideology that's going on in Israel and with the IDF that bore out of Reform Judaism that took place in, that began in Europe and was subsequently judged by God because, you know, when you reform Judaism, what you're essentially saying is that you're reforming God's word. And this occurred in a movement called Wissenschaft des Unitums, the science of Judaism. So essentially, we join our God and what he has established with this false God that is trying to set itself up as God while concurrently denying that he even exists. Any person who is sensible when this is pointed out to them, any person who has truth in them will agree that something's wrong here. A field that says that you evolved, that you did not, you were not created, there is no God, but that you evolved and then bases all of its disciplines on that fundamental premise that you evolved and were not created. A field that says you need human beings and medications and poisons and tinctures and treatments in order to live. And they will tell you whether you will live or die. If you look at what this was in scripture, it was outright witchcraft. Ahaziah fell through the lattice in the roof. He sent his men to go consult a Beelzebub as to whether he would live or die. And Elijah burned up 50 men, two sets of 50 men. And on the third set, he said, you go tell Ahaziah that he, because he has done this, is there no God in Ekron that you have sent your men to go and consult a Beelzebub as to whether you will live or die? Because you have done this, you will surely die. And Ahaziah died. What did Jesus and the apostles do when they were here? Did they give you medicines and tinctures and diagnoses? Or did they tell you that your condition is not a diagnosis, but a spiritual condition in which you need to repent or something worse will happen to you? Did Jesus not say that when a spirit comes out of a person, aka when he casts it out, that it goes through arid places looking for rest and doesn't find it. And then when it comes back and that house is found swept clean and unoccupied, which means that person is not repented and returned to God, that it brings with it seven more spirits more wicked than itself. And the final condition of that person is worse than it was in the beginning. So it will be with this wicked generation. He already told us what the condition would be. He did not say, then I'll send you doctors and false gods to contrive diagnoses and postulations about what your condition is. He told you your condition. So stop using those diagnoses. There are times when we talk about things in descriptive terms and we'll say, okay, like the other day I said on a video, neuropathy. And I said, I'm not using this as a diagnosis. I'm using it to be descriptive about symptoms. If you're using it as a diagnosis, if you're using it to say that you have some condition rather than these are the symptoms I have as a result of whatever God is doing with me, you're speaking on the authority of the world. There's no truth in you. That's what the word says. If you don't speak on the authority of the one who sent you, there is no truth in you. And so what Reformed Judaism did is they reformed God's word. They led you away from him. They led you to science, their false God and the science of Judaism. I don't know what the heck that is, but it is not true, it is not real, and it is not biblical. And yes, judgment was brought on a people who did this, a people who were called to be God's people, who continue to conveniently claim that they are God's people, but they don't regard his law, they don't regard his word, and they justify what they're doing. They justify the murder of Palestinians, using the word, using God's name. These are not religious people. These are irreligious people. So I spoke with you about this for a while. And yeah, people just hate it that I'm even saying this, but that's because they don't love truth. There's a very large percentage of counterfeit Christianity who follows this, blindly supporting murder, like this is what God is accomplishing right now for his will, for goodness against his law. No, this is what rebellious, evil people are doing. But make no mistake, 
God is accomplishing his will. Wickedness is blossoming. And these people are going to their destruction. This is what they've chosen. They have chosen that they want a land here in the carnal, here in this temporary life. They are not interested in a country of their own in eternity. They're not interested in that. Abraham didn't go into the land as a foreigner and say, hey, God said this was my land, so I'm going to murder everybody here. He went and lived in tents with his sons, humble, believing in the promise of God, looking forward to the promise of God in eternity, not here in the temporary. But today's Judaism, well, they can just do whatever they want. The word says we don't inherit the kingdom until he brings Babylon down. Babylon is still alive and well, guys. That does not happen until after the resurrection. Babylon does not even come down during the resurrection. All of the bowls of wrath are pulled, poured out, and then Babylon falls. And then, it isn't even until then that Christ marries his bride, that the wedding supper of the Lamb has come. Know your word. Know your word. And if you think that what I'm saying is harsh, that God would bring the Holocaust as judgment for people reforming his word, you need to know your word. Read Leviticus 26. Read Deuteronomy 28. And of every other prophecy of Isaiah, of Ezekiel, of Jeremiah. I'm sick and tired of people acting like God is not a God of wrath as well as love. Making up their own gods. Those are not gods that will save. God brings wrath. And to be a people set apart, to be the light of the world and the salt of the earth, and to go and reform his word... You better believe that he will do all of the things that he has said he will do. Let me read just a little snippet of what God says he will do in Ezekiel 5, verse 8. Therefore, this is what the sovereign Lord says. I myself am against you, Jerusalem, his own people, and I will inflict punishment on you in the sight of the nations. Because of all your detestable idols, I will do to you what I have never done before and will never do again. Therefore, in your midst... Parents will eat their children and children will eat their parents. I will inflict punishment on you and scatter all your survivors to the winds. Therefore, as surely as I live, declares the sovereign Lord, because you have defiled my sanctuary with all your vile images and detestable practices, I myself will shave you. I will not look on you with pity or spare you. A third of your people will die of the plague or perish by famine inside of you. A third will fall by the sword outside your walls, and a third I will scatter to the winds and pursue with drawn sword. Verse 14, I will make you a ruin and a reproach among the nations around you in the sight of all who pass by. You will be a reproach and a taunt, a warning, and an object of horror to the nations around you when I inflict punishment on you in anger and in wrath and with stinging rebuke. I, the Lord, have spoken. When I shoot at you with my deadly and destructive arrows of famine, I will shoot to destroy you. I will bring more and more famine upon you and will cut off your food supply, your supply of food. I will send famine and wild beasts against you and they will leave you childless. Plague and bloodshed will sweep through you and I will bring the sword against you. I, the Lord, have spoken. Is he a liar? Does he threaten in vain? I don't know what God people are believing in, but my God is not a man that he should lie. So I want you to hear what... God's own people. You want to make everything about ethnic Jews? Because this is not about ethnicity. God didn't call an ethnicity to be his ultimately. In the beginning, he established a nation and he set them apart as his own. And he called them clean and he called everyone else unclean. And he gave you food requirements in order for you to understand the clean from the unclean and how you're supposed to separate them. And he said, you are a nation that's been set apart to me. You do not mingle with other nations. You do not live as they do, worship their gods, marry their women. You are mine. And then he sent his son and his son extended salvation to the Gentiles. And the Gentiles who received him, as well as the Jews who received him, because listen, those who did not receive Jesus Christ were broken off. That is what the word says. They were broken off. Stop acting like an ethnicity are the chosen people. The chosen people are those who are circumcised in heart. That is how Paul defines a Jew in the word. Not by ethnicity, not by physical circumcision, by circumcision of the heart. That is how you are defined as Jerusalem, Israel, Mount Zion. And the fruit of that is that you obey. That's how you'll know if you're in that definition. So I want you to hear, because there are a lot of stupid counterfeit Christians supporting these things and acting like Israel is some ethnic group. 
and is located in the Middle East, but that's because you're not reading the word. You're not reading the New Testament and you're not taking it to heart. You're not applying it. You're just carnal and without sense. I want you to listen to what ethnic Jews in the Middle East are saying about what's going on over there. I want you to listen to Bernie Sanders, who I don't always agree with his politics. I don't really care personally about politics. What I care about is what is right. But Bernie Sanders also ethnic Jew, and he's speaking out against this, and he's telling you how it is. He's telling you that if you do not agree with Benjamin Netanyahu's ideology and agenda, that there are consequences. And I think it's important that you understand what is going on with the important people of the world in politics. Not that you, not that you take it seriously, not that politics are what's going to save you or appointing a human king. You know how I feel about that. If you listen to the channel, I do not vote. I return to God and he appoints the people who are going to rule. I don't care what your opinion is about that because that is not what I put my hope in. And if that's what you put your hope in, this is not the channel for you. We were never supposed to put our hope in a human king or a political system. We're supposed to put our hope in God. He does not need the constructs and systems of man. These things are laughable to him. Let's start with Bernie Sanders. Any person who's a billionaire here, I don't know how many billionaires we have. Probably not too many, but you are aspiring billionaires, all right? But if you get there, you will be able to spend unlimited amounts of money, hundreds of millions of dollars supporting candidates you like or defeating candidates you don't like. That is not a democracy. That is a corrupt political system. It is no secret, therefore, that in the midst of all of this, we have lobbying groups like APAC and the far right. Christians United for Israel lobby, who are providing unquestioning support for Israel's right-wing government. They are spending enormous sums of money right now to influence our political system. Mon okay, I want you to listen to what he's saying, that they are providing unquestioning support for Israel's right-wing government. Now, let me tell you something. This is not about left-wing or right-wing. They're both evil. What you need to understand is that they're providing unquestioning support for the Antichrist's agenda. What is the Antichrist's agenda? Evil, to steal, kill, and destroy. His agenda is not just to kill Palestinians and, you know, to, uh, to hurt God's people and all of these other things. It's to deceive and to steal the souls of those stupid people who don't know the word, claim that they're people of God, but provide unquestioning to support to something that is completely anti-biblical, that is not of God, period. It is not of God. It is against his law. And why do they do it? Well, it's in their name, isn't it? Christians united for Israel? They're stupid. We are Israel. What do you mean Christians united for Israel? This is stupid. Jonathan Kahn, John Hagee, all of these false teachers that promote this idea that Israel refers to a land and an ethnicity. They are irreligious. They do not love the word of God. This is not what the word of God says. It's not what the New Testament defines to be a Jew, Israel, or Jerusalem. These people are liars. And the people who follow them are just as guilty as the false teachers and false prophets they listen to. They are stupid. They don't read their word. They have no sense. They do not love truth. And I want you to understand that this is the exact description of the Antichrist kingdom, of the Antichrist system that rises in the end to overpower and kill, kill God's people. You think that this doesn't apply to you? What's going on in Palestine? You are next. And I want you to understand something. Revelation makes it really clear. You are either going to be of the beast or you are going to be persecuted by the beast. Those are the only two categories, guys. No one's going to fly under the radar and be like, oh, well, I'm just going to I'm just going to stay to myself with my family. Keep building my empire here on earth. No, the end times you are either of the beast or you have the seal of God. That's it. You will either receive the mark of the beast or you will receive this. You have already received prior to these seven years beginning the seal of God. If you believe that you have the seal of God or you want the seal of God, you want to be in Christ. God has put that in your heart, but you know what he doesn't do is he doesn't do it for you. You had better return to him and understand what's going on right now at this time. I'm going to rewind a little bit just to um, get back into so that I can give the context again 
of what Bernie is saying. Far-right Christians United for Israel lobby who are providing unquestioning support for Israel's right-wing government. They are spending enormous sums of money right now to influence our political system, money, politics, foreign policy. Last election cycle, APAC Super PAC spent over $30 million in dark money to oppose progressive candidates, many of whom I have personally worked with and supported, who spoke out in favor of Palestinian human rights instantly. That's all you got to do. Speak out in favor of the dignity that's all, of the Palestinian people. And then uh, you are on the APAC hit list uh, and you will be the recipients of large amounts of money trying to defeat you. And we have to acknowledge that APAC was successful uh, in all but two of their races. The message was clear. If you criticize Netanyahu, you will be targeted. Meanwhile, because they are a bipartisan group, APAC not only contributes heavily to Democrats, but endorsed more than 100 election-denying right-wing pro-insurrectionist Republicans. This election, APAC is expected to spend approximately $100 million just to try to unseat progressive members of Congress who dare to speak out about what's going on in Gaza. Okay, I want to see one thing about this election denying. Okay, you can think whatever you want in terms of conspiracy or maybe you're even correct that someone stole the election. But I want you to understand something. If you believe in God, then you believe that everything that happens has happened under him. If he wants to interfere in your election, then he will. That's what he will do. That's why I tell you, I don't vote. I return to God. He's the one who's going to decide how everything is going to go down regardless of our vote or whatever it is that we do. He will make sure that his will is accomplished. Now, do you hear what Bernie is saying? That there are groups that contribute billions and billions of dollars to this political agenda, what he's calling a political agenda. What I'm telling you is an antichrist agenda. But part of what he's saying is that what is happening right now in Israel and in Gaza is significant to biblical prophecy, not for the reason that the false counterfeit Christians are saying that everything that, that is happening in end times is going to happen in Israel. No, they are influencing our political structure here in the United States. They are influencing what is happening here in the false prophet of the United States. We, the false prophet, are testifying to these antichrist behaviors, agendas, distortions of God's word. The United States is doing that. It is testifying as the false prophet. It is being influenced by that antichrist agenda and spirit. If you are looking at what is happening and you are thinking that you are exempt, oh, those poor people, you had better wake up. Because if you are in Christ, these very people who are blindly giving their support, who give unquestioning, they don't even question what they're doing, unquestioning support, these are the people who are going to stand there and give their approval for you to be killed and say that they're doing a service to God. That is what Jesus said. Listen to what Jesus says, John 16, all this I have told you so that you will not fall away. They will put you out of the synagogue. In fact, the time is coming when anyone who kills you will think they are offering a service to God. They will do such things because they have not known the father or me. I have told you this so that when the time comes, you will remember that I warned you about them. I did not tell you this from the beginning because I was with you, but now I'm going to him who sent me. If you think he's just talking to the apostles, you're not understanding the way that Jesus has spoken to the apostles because he talks about the abomination of desolation that is set up on the 1290th day. The apostles are not here right now. That abomination of desolation has not even been set up. It's set up at the end of the seven year period. So when Jesus is speaking to the apostles, yes, he's speaking to them for their benefit. He's also speaking to them for ours. All right, let's finish up Bernie Sanders' uh, speech. So anyone who wants to talk about foreign policy, or for that matter, anything else that goes on in Congress, without recognizing the corrupt political system that we have and the impact that money has over what we do, really doesn't know very much about what's going on. He's right. These are the things that are going on behind the scenes that God is using behind the scenes in order to fulfill what he has told us will happen. 
if you don't have it in you to speak up about the, these things going on that you know, you should know if God is in you, that these things are unjust and they are against his word and against his law. If you don't speak up, you don't stand for something, you're going to fall for what the Antichrist will bring. You don't have the courage. You don't have the sense. You don't have it in you to go return to God and ask him if what I'm saying is true, you will fall. Because what you have defined yourself to be is a wicked and lazy servant. One who, who has the attitude that as long as I don't know what's going on, I'm exempt from doing anything. I'm too scared. It's an inconvenience. Counterfeit Christianity didn't hold me accountable for anything. These attitudes will be to your death. Now I want you to listen to what is going on in Israel with the very people who live there, okay? You can be a spectator all day long outside, you know, over here in the United States, listening to the news and everything else. But you need to listen to what people are actually saying who are living there. And I'm not talking about, oh, this is the news station that I listen to because they present an unbiased view. Come on. No one presents an unbiased view. You need to listen with the Holy Spirit and pay attention to what God's drawing you to. And what God's drawing me to here is to listen to what people are saying who are living there. People who weren't necessarily speaking out before, but now they've had enough. These are their own people, not people who are being bought out like Mia Shem, who in one interview that's suddenly disappeared from the internet, in one interview, she said that she was treated well, that they were good people, the Palestinians. And now suddenly she goes on an interview talking about how some guy was raping her with his eyes. What is that? Pretty sure the guy could have done whatever he wanted to you if they're that evil. This is disgusting. I watched the way that her attitude changed. She was clearly bought out. How do you have two separate interviews with totally conflicting information and weird, vague, he's raping me with his eyes. Come on. This is corrupt. It is disgusting. Emotions are boiling over on the streets of Tel Aviv, meanwhile, with demands for Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu to resign. 136 hostages are still being held by Hamas in Gaza, and their families are running out of patience. Dozens blocked a major highway on Saturday night, lighting bonfires. An angry crowd marched on military headquarters, demanding a deal with Hamas to free the remaining hostages. TW's Ben Fazulin reports. <laughs> The battle lines are drawn between the demonstrators and police. A 1,000 strong crowd outside military headquarters. Police are now moving in, some of them on horseback, to subdue the protesters. Things are reaching tipping point here in Tel Aviv. They're taking away one protester after the next. They shout at the police, shame on you. What they're doing is they're attacking protesters um, and uh, arresting peaceful uh, uh, protesters and attacking them, uh, choking them, trampling them, uh, doing exactly what you would expect from a corrupt militia in a, in a dictatorial country. And now they're using uh, uh, these horses. You do not do, need to do that in order to uh, clear the streets. Uh, the protests have been very peaceful. They've also been growing every week and becoming more and more political. This was a nation in shock just four months ago. They were dealing with the trauma of October 7. They were dealing with a war against Hamas. Now their fury is pointed directly at the Israeli government. This parliament of ours right now is a government of criminals and a parliament of criminals, which are busy like robbing the, um, the economy of this state and uh, taking care of uh, private interests instead of taking care of the state, which is really what we did right now. Just up the road, the families of hostages block a highway, setting bonfires ablaze. They want the immediate release of the captives. The same message a kilometer away at Habima Square. Residents of Tel Aviv tell me about their fears for Israeli and Palestinian lives. I'm here because I am a, I am a strongly against the violence that is happening in the Gaza Strip. As an Israeli citizen, I'm, I'm devastated to live my life normally while this is happening an hour away from me. The situation is just unbearable. The government we have here is just destroying the country, destroying the future of my children. We are 
in a situation that is so sad and so deeply, deeply disturbing that we just cannot continue to stay home and not say anything. We need to have elections. Never ever so many people have died in Israel in one war. And this is one government that is in charge for this. And they're not taking any responsibility for what happened. And it's unbelievable. 126 days of war. How much longer will Netanyahu's coalition last? Okay, so these reports are coming from DW News and the other is coming from uh, Bernie Sanders' YouTube page just so that you have the, the sources. I don't endorse either of these. Like I said, when I am listening to the news, I'm listening for what is actually face valid. Where is God leading me to? So I'm not listening because, of, uh, because I align myself with Bernie Sanders. I don't. But what he's saying is true. What he's saying here is true. And you heard what's going on with these, with these Israelis who originally stayed quiet because it was a shock to them that Hamas had attacked. And also because people, uh, hello, are brainwashed by their government, but they can see now. The jig is up on what Netanyahu is doing, what the IDF is doing. The jig is up on the agenda and they're tired of it. And you can see the way that their own country is treating them. They're not allowed to protest. They're not allowed to be upset about this. They're not allowed to speak against what Netanyahu is doing. And if you think this is isolated to the, the literal land of Israel in the Middle East, you heard what Bernie Sanders had to say. It affects us too. And it affects us because just like Constantine the fake, who used Christianity as a way to bolster his political power, that's exactly what these politicians are doing. What do you think Donald Trump is doing? Was he some missionary for Christianity all his life? Why is he suddenly so Christian? Why is this religious system of so-called Christianity, counterfeit Christianity, so politicized now? What interest do they have in appointing a king? Weren't we never supposed to want a human king? Weren't the Israelites repenting for their rebellion in rejecting Samuel and rejecting God in order to have a human king? Isn't this something that they talked with Samuel about when Samuel came back to talk with them? Listen to what Samuel says. So uh, 1 Samuel 8 verse 4. So all the elders of Israel gathered together and came to Samuel at Ramah. They said to him, you are old and your sons do not follow your ways. Now appoint a king to lead us such as all the other nations have. But when they said, give us a king to lead us, they displeased Samuel. So he prayed to the Lord and the Lord told him, listen to all that the people are saying to you. It is not you they have rejected, but they have rejected me as their king. As they have done from the day I brought them out of, uh, brought them up out of Egypt until this day, forsaking me and serving other gods, so they are doing to you. Now listen to them, but warn them solemnly and let them know what the king who will reign over them will claim as his rights. We're coming full circle, guys, because our kings claim their rights over us. Samuel told all the words of the Lord to the people who were asking him for a king. He said, this is what the king who will reign over you will claim as his rights. He will take your sons and make them serve with his chariots and horses, and they will run in front of his chariots. Some he will assign to be commanders of thousands and commanders of fifties and others to plow his ground and reap his harvest and still others to make weapons of war and equipment for his chariots. He will take your daughters to be perfumers and cooks and bakers. He will take the best of your fields and vineyards and olive groves and give them to his attendants. He will give, he will take a 10th of your grain and of your vintage and give it to his officials and attendants. Your male and female servants and the best of your cattle and donkeys he will take for his own use. He will take a tenth of your flocks and you yourselves will become his slaves. When that day comes, you will cry out for relief from the king you have chosen, but the Lord will not answer you in that day. What's the difference? God asked for a tenth of all you had, right? That was part of sacrifice, not today's counterfeit tithing. Sacrifice was fulfilled. God asked for these things. And in asking for these things, he also gave them, shared them with his priests. So this is how his priests were eating. This is how they were cared for, a tenth of everything you brought. And unlike a human king who doesn't even have the capacity nor the heart to reward you for what you're doing for him, God blessed you. God blesses you. 
when you bring to him. So if you want to submit yourself to a human king, that's what you want. You want to go and say, eh, they, they messed with our elections. We wanted Donald Trump. We wanted Biden. We wanted whoever. You want to go do that and put your hope there? That's what you'll be handed over to. Don't talk to me about voting. Don't talk to me about what rights I should exercise. The rights I choose to exercise are those that the Father gives me because there are no rights under human leaders. You will never be free under a human leader. Verse 19, but the people refused to listen to Samuel. No, they said, we want a king over us. Then we will be like all the other nations with a king to lead us and to go out before us and fight our battles. You understand that these are the things God tells us he does. We either believe that or we don't. But let me tell you something. Human kings are not fighting your battles. They're fighting their own. Their own political, personal interests. When Samuel heard all that the people said, he repeated it before the Lord. The Lord answered him, listen to them and give them a king. Then Samuel said to the Israelites, everyone go back to your own town. Now listen to what happens in chapter 12, just a short little four chapters later. Samuel said to all Israel, I have listened to everything you said to me and have set a king over you. Now you have a king as your leader. As for me, I'm old and gray. My sons are here with you. I have been your leader from my youth until this day. Here I stand. Testify against me in the presence of the Lord and his anointed. Whose ox have I taken? Whose donkey have I taken? Whom have I cheated? Whom have I oppressed? From whose hands have I accepted a bribe to make me shut my eyes? If I've done any of these things, I will make it right. You've not cheated or oppressed us, they replied. You've not taken anything from anyone's hand. Samuel said to them, to them the Lord is witness against you and also his anointed is his wit is witness this day that you have not found anything in my hand. He is witness, they said. Then Samuel said to his people, it is the Lord who appointed Moses and Aaron and brought your ancestors up out of Egypt. Now then stand here because I'm going to confront you with evidence before the Lord as to all the righteous acts performed by the Lord for you and your ancestors. After Jacob entered Egypt, they cried to the Lord for help and the Lord sent Moses and Aaron who brought your ancestors out of Egypt and settled them in this place. But they forgot the Lord their God, so he sold them into the hand of Sisera, the commander of the army of Hazor, and into the hands of the Philistines and the king of Moab who fought against them. They cried out to the Lord and said, We've sinned. We have forsaken the Lord and served the Baals and the Ashtoreths. But now deliver us from the hands of our enemies and we will serve you. Then the Lord sent Jerobbaal, Barak, Jephthah, and Samuel, and he delivered you from the hands of your enemies all around you so that you lived in safety. But when you saw that Nahash, king of the Ammonites, was moving against you, you said to me, No, we want a king to rule over us, even though the Lord your God was your king. Now here is the king you've chosen, the one you asked for. See, the Lord has set a king over you. If you fear the Lord and serve and obey him and do not rebel against his commands, and if both you and the king who reigns over you follow the Lord your God, good. But if you do not obey the Lord, and if you rebel against his commands, his hand will be against you, as it was against your ancestors. Now then, stand and see, stand still and see this great thing the Lord is about to do before your eyes. Is it not wheat harvest now? I will call on the Lord to send thunder and rain, and you will realize what an evil thing you did in the eyes of the Lord when you asked for a king. Then Samuel called on the Lord that same day. The Lord sent thunder and rain, so all the people stood in awe of the Lord and of Samuel. The people all said to Samuel, Pray to the Lord your God for your servants so that we will not die. For we have added to all our other sins the evil of asking for a king. Do not be afraid, Samuel replied. You've done all this evil, yet do not turn away from the Lord, but serve the Lord with all your heart. Do not turn away after useless idols. They can do you no good, nor can they rescue you because they're useless. For the sake of his great name, the Lord will not reject his people because the Lord was pleased to make you his own. As for me, far be it from me that I should sin against the Lord by failing to pray for you. And I will teach you the way that is good and right. But be sure to fear the Lord and serve him faithfully with all your heart. Consider what great things he's done for you. Yet if you persist in doing evil, both you and your king will perish. So what is Samuel saying? Your king, ultimately, he's relegated him as useless. He's useless. Still in these days, your king is useless. The only thing that has ever mattered is that you fear the Lord and you obey him and do what is good and right. Serve him faithfully with all your heart. Consider what great things he's done for you. 
I don't see this attitude. I don't see this in the heart of those claiming to be Christian. I see absolute wickedness and stupidity and the fact that there is a lobbying group called Christians United for Israel speaks to that wickedness. It speaks to that stupidity and foolishness and wickedness. You're either God's people or you're not. These are children of Satan coming together to fund an agenda that comes from him to take things into their own hands. I don't see anyone fasting. Who's praying and fasting for the will of God to be accomplished? I don't see that. Who's returning to God? Who's even preaching that? I don't hear it. I hear people saying, pray for the land, be a good steward of the land. And they think that that's Christian. They think that sounds real Christian. Oh, this is because we haven't been good stewards of the land. No, dummy. The word says it's because you haven't returned to God. It's because you've gone off to serve idols. And now you're acting like the idol of the work of your own hands is what is needed in order to fix the disaster that you created by turning away from God. How are you going to turn up at him and you've been serving all these other gods? You think he's going to respond to your prayer to heal the land? God's word says that if you return to me, I'll heal you and your land. No one's humbling themselves. No one's turning away from their wickedness. No one's examining and repenting. And no one's teaching others to do likewise. It's just a bunch of counterfeit Christians following what other children of Satan say. Like Francis saying, we need the Ten Commands of Climate Change and we need to observe a counterfeit Sabbath and pray for the land and submit ourselves to science. How is that going to save? Stop listening to human beings, guys. Go to God. That's my message every single time. I don't tell you, listen to the next video and the next video and the next video and contribute to my Patreon. So a blessing. I don't say anything like that to you. I share with you what God shares with me and I shepherd you back to him and I always tell you discern what I have said. Go to him and ask him if what I've said is true. Don't just take me at face value. Discern by the spirit of God. This is what's happening. The Antichrist system is rising and most of you don't even see it. Counterfeit religion is coming together. Counterfeit Judaism, Catholicism, Christian nationalism, the counterfeit Christians and their lobbies. All politics does, by the way, is add in the more agenda on how to mobilize these ideologies. They don't care about religion. These are irreligious people. What they're doing is adding in greed and glory and power. That's the function of politics. That is mobilizing the Antichrist agenda. The United States, as the false prophet, is mobilizing the Antichrist agenda, which is a woman riding a beast, a church writing government, a church that is controlling government. What church is that? It's the church of Satan, guys. It's the synagogue of Satan. That's what God refers to it as. It's in Israel. It's in Rome. It's all coming together as counterfeit religion. That is the system of the Antichrist. That is what you're going to see rise. That's what you're seeing rise right now. I hope you have the sense to see it. If you don't, if you're wondering if what I'm saying is true, Go return to God with your whole heart and ask him.